Church, there are three things that when it happens to any man, you cannot downplay three things in the lives of men. Men will do anything to survive these three things. One is hunger. Two is sickness. Three is lack or poverty. When somebody, when a man is hungry for food, they will do anything even if to the extent of going to their enemy just so that they will satisfy their hunger. Ask Esau. He was so hungry that his brother intelligently I don't know where Jacob got that mind from that this food that I have let me ask Esau to sell me his birthright before I can give him a bit of the food. I don't know where he got that mentality from. But because of hunger, Esau did not recognize the importance of him being a firstborn son. And because of beans, lentils, he gave up his birthright. And the Bible says that in the book of Hebrew, it got to a time when he came to his senses. He sought to get that birthright again. But it was too late. Hunger can let men do things, unimaginable things. Sickness, when someone is sick and deteriorating, no matter what, they will do everything just so that that sickness will go away. They can go to even a fetish. The fetish might weary add sand to it kill an animal add blood as disgusting as it is and ask them to apply it on themselves thinking that it will heal them and as disgusting as it is a man made in the image of God will stoop so low and do it hunger sicknesses the third one is lack. When somebody lacks something, especially when it comes to the lack of money, the lack of resources, people can kill their mothers who gave birth to them. All not for happiness, not for pleasure, but to satisfy a certain hunger of lack and of poverty. When somebody lacks, they will do degrading things, unimaginable things, just so that they will get something in their hands. Church, as the 21st century Christians, if you don't present to the church, to the world, a God who heals, a Jesus who heals, if we, we don't present to the world a Jesus who provides, if you don't present to the world a God who prospers, believe you me, a time will come you will get in church and there will be nobody there. That is where the world has got into. If you don't present a healing Jesus, if you don't present a God that provides, and if you don't present a God that prospers to the world. They wouldn't know the God that we serve. And as children of God, as beacons of hope, it is our mandate and it is our duty to experience and encounter and also to become testaments of the God who prospers. And it is our mandate. And today, this morning, I want to present to you the God who prospers. The God who prospers. Church, it is our mandate. The mandate has been given to us to present unto a failing world, unto a dying world, that we serve a God 
prospers. So first John chapter 1 verse 1, he says, What we have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hands have touched, what we have encountered, that is what we testify of. But how can you testify of a God that come to Jesus, he will save you, he will heal you, he will prosper you, when you do not, you have not encountered the God of prosperity, the God who prospers. Sometimes people can look at it and say, Unless we know and encounter the God who prospers, the world will be as it is. So in Psalm 37, when Israel went into captivity in Babylon, they said, by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down, and there we wept. By the poplar trees, there we hung our stringed instruments, and there we hung our harps. And there by those rivers, as we are weeping, our, our, our captors and our tormentors asked us to sing them a song of our God in Zion. But as we are weeping, we ask ourselves, how can we sing our Lord's song in a strange land? How can I tell you that Jesus saves, that Jesus heals, that Jesus prospers, when me, I cannot testify that there is a God that prospers. And church, our prosperity in Christ. Let me say this. We serve a God who is both a prosperous God and a prospering, a prospering God. He is both prosperous. Haggai 2.8 The gold is mine and the silver is mine. He owns everything because from Genesis, God made everything through Christ. In him were all things made. And without him, Jesus, nothing was ever made that was made. So he is not only a prosperous God, he is also a prospering God. A God that prospers. So in Genesis chapter 12, he told Abraham, leave thy father's house unto a land that I will show you I will make your name great. I will bless you. And I will make your name great. I will make you into a great nation. God, the maker of men. The God who prospers. One of his names. Not only Jehovah El Shaddai. The God our sufficiency. Not only Jehovah Rapha. The God our healer. He is the God who also prospers. He said, I will make your name great. And I God, the maker of men, the lifter of the heads of men, I will bless you. And when you read Genesis 13 verse 1, the Bible says, and the Lord blessed Abraham that he was so wealthy that he had a lot. He had gold, he had silver, and he had cattle. Because he encountered not only the God a savior, not only a God who gave him Isaac at the age of 100 years, he encountered a, a, another dimension of God that is the God that prospers. Church, we are in a generation that if we say we serve a living God, then that God should manifest himself in you and I. Otherwise, we will become a laughing stock. I am telling you. If God does not manifest himself in us, Christians will become a laughing stock. When you are in need, and you go and ask a Muslim, so to speak, just as another example, or a heathen, somebody who did not go to church, and you borrow from that person to the extent that you are not even able to pay, and the person keeps bothering you, bothering you, one day, not that person, but somebody around will say, ah, 
So we are not our son, no, no. So we are not your Papa. This situation, you shouldn't have been in this situation. We serve a God that prospers, and our prosperity, church. One thing I want you to know, and that is my mission for today. Am I not finished? Our prosperity. I want you to know today that you and I, our prosperity is enshrined in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Our prosperity. And I'm going to give you five proofs that as you watch me and listen to me, you were not born to be like this. You were born to prosper. And nobody should say, you know, sometimes certain things happen and we say, oh! And yes, she. But when it happens to you, that is when you will find the meaning of it. One day I got up. It got to a time in my life. Just, just give the Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 first. Put it one by one. It got to a time. As I was growing up, when I got to a certain stage, my mom became so sick that after some years, she passed on. Then after my mom, Three or four years after my mom passed on, my younger brother, my sibling, suddenly I was awake when they called me that he has passed. As if that was not enough. Two years after my younger brother died, my dad passed on right after the COVID. For him, 95 years, he lived his bed. But exactly two years when my old boy died, my elder brother in the UK, after some sicknesses, also passed away. Then one day I stood up and I told God that if you, the God that I serve, if you are alive, sometimes the most painful thing is to see your loved ones go through things that you become so helpless to help them. Nobody will want to stand there and see their mother, 66 years, degenerate to death and the person will be happy. Nobody will want to stand there and see their brother in London degenerate with a strange sickness that doctors have no known of. And he passed away. I stood up one day and I said, God, if there is ever a gift that I will ever desire in my life, let it be the gift of the healing and the working of miracles. I don't need the gift of prophecy. I don't need to prophesy to you. The prophets are there. I don't need to evangelize to you. The evangelists are there. I don't need to teach you. Our father is there. He will teach you. But what my eyes have seen, if there is ever a gift that you ever give me, it is not, will not be the gift of money. It will not be the gift of prophecy. It will be the gift of healing. Because I've seen four of my very own degenerate and die helpless. Then I went to a, 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 a prophetic, they call it prophetic inquiry that time. And a man of God picked me. And he said, God said, I should tell you. He has sent three of his angels to be with you. And the man of God said, I don't know. He said, he saw in my hands, I was wearing gloves. The gloves was burning, but I could not feel it. And that he has given me the healing anointing and the healing grace. That the power that God has given me, my power is not in my mouth. He said, my power is in my hands. The video is on my phone because of time. I would have played it for you. The power is not in my mouth. The power is in my hands. For two, three months, our father would testify. This left hand of mine was burning like, like coal. Sometimes consciously, I can put ice water in a bowl and I will lay my hands under the ice water and it will still be burning like coal. That is when I realized that, yes, when you are hungry for something from God, and God knows that what you are hungry for is going to benefit you and other people, He will give it to you on a silver platter. The God who prospers. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor that through his poverty, through Jesus' poverty, you will become rich. 
or prosperous. I am showing you that we have a God that prospers. And your, your prosperity is not in the hands of man. Your prosperity is not in the hands of an employer. Your prosperity before you were born was enshrined in the redemptive work of Jesus. If Jesus, if you believe that Jesus, let's go back to the first one. If you believe that Jesus came to die for you, as you watch me today, I want to tell you, your prosperity is not in the hands of man. That your prosperity before you were born, it was packaged and was waiting for you. Yes. He said, though he was rich, though he was a king in heaven, ruling with the father, he left his kingship to come on this earth to be humiliated, to be despised, to be crucified on the cross, naked. The men, women, and children were laughing at him and they were scorning him. That a mere soldier can put a crown of thorns on God in human form's head and hit it and make a mockery. Look, Jesus was on this people. Men made a mockery of Jesus on this earth and he allowed that mockery for your sake just so that he'll be able to lift you from where you were to a bigger place. Look, Jesus voluntarily, he allowed that mockery. That is why in the Garden of Gethsemane, when one of the disciples chopped off somebody's ear, Jesus asked them, is it me that you are coming to arrest with clubs and knife and machetes? Right here, I can command legions of angels to come and defend me. But he allowed the mockery, the shame, just so that you will become rich. That though he was rich, he said, for your sake, he became poor so that through his poverty, that for the moment Jesus said, it is finished. Somebody watching me here, your poverty and your lack, Jesus crucified it on the cross. Look, the earlier we get to know this and take our stand and claim that which is ours, church, the earlier it will be better for us. Otherwise, the church of God will always be going to the world to borrow. And we will always be a scorn. That how can we sing the Lord's song? The song that we sing to our God in his temple in Zion. Our captors, they were, while they were tormenting us, they were mocking us, that sing us a song of your God, even in a foreign land. Your prosperity is enshrined in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And he was made a curse for you and I. When you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, these were the curses that Moses told the Israelites, if you do not obey them or hearken to the voice of God, these curses will come upon you. And he said, that curse that God pronounced in Deuteronomy 28, he said, Christ has redeemed us from that curse of the law. And he was made a curse for us because it is written, cursed is anyone who hung on the tree. Verse 14, watch this. Shall we all read together? That the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, you and I, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through us. That the blessings of who? That the blessings of who? Might come to you and I, the Gentiles, through Christ Jesus. He was made, he was hung on a tree. He became a curse. But why? Because after his resurrection, the blessings of Abraham, that God promised Abraham that I will bless you, I will make your name great, that those blessings might come on you and I through Christ Jesus. We are the Gentiles. Yeah. Your prosperity is enshrined 
in the redemptive work of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29. Let's do Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. Praise be to the Lord and God and Master of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and prosperity in the heavenly places in what? In Christ. God has already prospered you and I. We are prospered in Christ. Our prosperity was hidden in the, the, work, the blood of Jesus that he shared. Friday I was telling the church here that look, the blood, the blood of Jesus is not so cheap. It was an expensive commodity that fell on the cross of Calvary. That's why Paul told the Corinthians, what betides that person who would make light work of the blood of Jesus? What Jesus did on the cross is enough to take us from captivity, from poverty to prosperity. He's already done it. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I'm showing you five proofs that shows that your prosperity is already enshrined in the redemptive work of Christ. For I know the thoughts that I think about you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected end. Some other verses to say to prosper you and not to harm you. If you can get me that version. Hallelujah. The thoughts that God has concerning you and I are thoughts to prosper us. There is a version that says to prosper you. Our prosperity as a church, as people who have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus was planned years ago even before the foundations of the earth. Yes. We are not destined to be people who lack. If we are people who lack now, despite the redemptive work of Jesus, then it means there is something that we are not doing. And when you read 3 John chapter 2, he said, my dear friends, I wish and I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul that's what prosperity your soul Jesus did not save your body he did not save your spirit he saved your soul prosperity of the soul does not come from physical prosperity so when he says even as your soul prospereth what it means is that when you get to a point where you needed a savior and you came to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal savior and God reestablished the connection between you and him, at that moment, your soul begins to prosper. That is what the Bible says that the soul that sinned, that is the soul that shall die. The prosperity of our soul is that one day when Christ comes, he will rapture us into his eternal kingdom. Even as your soul prospereth, that I wish above all things that you also, not only your soul, but also physically, materially, emotionally, financially, maritally, prosper, even as your soul that is in Jesus is also prospering. And awaiting the day it will be raptured unto heaven. Hallelujah. Church, you and I, our prosperity is already enshrined in the redemptive work of Jesus. He has done it all. He has done it all. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 8 and 9, we said he has done it all. Galatians 3, 13 to 14, he has done it all. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he has done it all. 3 John chapter 2, he has done it all. Ephesians 1 verse 3, he has, done, he has blessed you 
with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. It's like a treasure box that he has opened it up and are waiting that we enjoy it. But there are codes. This is like a code. And God, today, we are trusting the Lord to give us one or two keys where we can assess our prosperity in Christ. The first one I want to talk about, Matthew chapter 11, verses 12. I want to teach you something. Matthew chapter 11, verses 12. Since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent people they take it by force. What I want to emphasize here is that they take it by force. Prosperity in the kingdom church one character you need to have is the character of aggressiveness. Do you know that if you are looking for people in this life who are not aggressive to let anything work for them, it is those of us in Christendom. Those of us, when it comes to aggressiveness, that this is what I want, I must get it. The people who are less aggressive are the people in this kingdom. But life naturally favors those who are very aggressive. I hope you know that. Life favors those who are very aggressive. Those of us with dogs in the house, maybe there will be one particular dog. The moment you put the food there, naturally it will start to bark. And anybody that comes around, it will be driving them away until it finishes the food. Sometimes when another dog that is seemingly also, you know, very tough comes around, you will leave the food and chase after that dog. And the rest of the dogs will be hiding under the tables. Checking whether this aggressive dog is coming. Life naturally favors those who are aggressive in life. Sir, if you want to make it in life, if you want to prosper, one of the traits you need to have, you need to be a man of aggression. Aggression, I'm telling you. Otherwise, somebody, whilst, whilst it is yours and you are putting it in your mouth, an aggressor, who pick it from your mouth and go away. Last I was saying it here, one of the Fridays, that when a prophetic word comes, when a man of God is, is, is preaching or giving prophecies like this, and he, he, he calls maybe uh, 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 Prophet Jonathan and gives him a word, the prophetic word moves around. It moves around like a spirit in the auditorium. I have called him, giving him a prophetic word. But the word will be moving around looking for people whose hearts are prepared to capture that word. So you see that the moment they give somebody a prophetic word, instantly somebody can leave their back and come and sow a seed. Say, ah, I kill into this. Sometimes when, when the person comes and lays here, I kill into this, you realize that sometimes people will be laughing at them. They've killed into it. And at, as time goes on, that prophecy might find fulfillment in the person who it was not directly to. But ran from the back and came to kill into it. Now near yet the prophecy, the man or no, that person could still be there. Yes. In Isaiah 7, verse 4, the Bible says that the virgin will be with a child. The Bible never mentioned that a, 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 Mary, a virgin called Mary will be with a child. Believe you me, when the angel Gabriel had gone to Mary and Mary had rejected that word of God, the angel would have still gone through Jerusalem, through Bethlehem, and found a virgin. That Jesus will come to do that. Because Isaiah in prophesying years back never mentioned the name of any virgin. No, he didn't. Read your word. That is the way the word is. It will be hovering around like that. Prepare souls. Aggression. Church, you cannot sometimes in life, you cannot put your, your hand in your ties and, and no, you have to be aggressive. Sometimes we live in a world where Christendom, when certain things it's this, oh, and yes, believe you me, you will not do it. You have to possess that which is yours. Genesis 23, verse 29. Tama, Tama was giving birth. Judah had gone into a prostitute. 
she had become pregnant at the point of giving birth the first child so one of the children put their hand first Zara and the midwife tied the hand with the red scarlet just so that when both of them come out they know that oh when are you penny the Bible said the moment Zara took his hand in Perez came out Perez became the firstborn not Zara Zara put his hand up first out he tied his hand with the red scarlet. So when he opened it, the moment he withdrew his hand, Perez, he didn't bring his hand, he, he, he came. Aggression. And the midwife said, ah, Perez, you are the firstborn. Perez means break forth. In the womb, they were jostling. Church, if you and I want to make it in this life, we have to be aggressive. I'm not talking about Aggression and yet, you know, we have that kind of and yet, you know, emphasis. Come some of one of my friends he say, and yet, the emphasis come and the emphasis come, my you know, but holding on to that which is yours, this is mine, and I must get it. Aggression, he said, the people they take it by what by force, they take it by force. It is mine, I've redeemed, I've been redeemed to possess this, I must take it. Sometimes, nyamebeye, nyamebeye, nyamebeye. Nafe, ye nshira e kosa. Then we always crying, crying, crying. What should God do? Sometimes you have to be very aggressive in this life. Otherwise, you would never get anything. Because naturally, life favors those who are aggressive. Yes, life naturally favors them. The second one is labor. Can you give me Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, when God planted the Garden of Eden, He told Adam, Adam, till this land, till, work, work this land, work it. There's everything, there's gold, there's oil. Everything is in the Garden of Eden. But God still told Adam, Work this. Proverbs 12, verse 11. He that tilleth the land, he that works, he that laboreth in the land will be satisfied with bread. But he that follows vain persons, I will, I will, I will explain this, followeth vain persons is void of, do you know a vain person? They look at somebody like uh, uh, Osei Kwame despite on TikTok, on Instagram, his cars, and they wish they were them. Wishing can never bring reality. Wishes. That is what he was talking about. They chase fantasies. Ah, I wish I was like that. Now we're trying to hold seven days fasting. Huh? And some people. They say they go around the fine, fine houses, you know. Uh, we, uh, the, the, uh, at the uh, judgment, uh, this one, we, we never bet them. Uh, uh, this one will be for my wife. This one will be for my first son. Hey. Hallelujah. You work. Church, hard work does not kill you. I am telling you, hard work does not kill Sometimes when you see these rich people, some of them, in as much as we don't know what they do in secret, but believe you me, some of them, they work tirelessly. And some of them, whilst those of us in the kingdom are praying prosperity to come and God gives us the work. Whilst we are snoring the night away, sometimes some of these people that we think do not know God, they rise up and they will be prospering more than we people in the kingdom. Do you know that currently the Arab world is the richest side of the world now because of the oil? Yes. Do you know what? 20 years ago, Dubai, do you know that it was a desert? And it is, it is a fact, though, 20 years there, some of us were alive. 
those who used to go there now everybody in the world goes there for holidays did they pray and the heavens just came down like that no they worked it they worked it they worked it hard work church hard work laziness in the kingdom and then I may have to do the other between and sometimes a church wants to build to God and will do envelopes and take it to people we profess do not know God how do I preach and convince that man that my God is a God who prospers when I am not a testament of the God I say prospers how do I tell them Osofo, how can a rich man come to my showroom to buy a Mercedes Benz and I tell the man that man I want to introduce my God to you a Jesus that heals a Jesus that saves and a Jesus that prospers and maybe he looks at you from top to down and there is nothing about you that will tell him that now a person will introduce you no man or no that God can make him more than what he is now and that is the paroxy church we are not able to let the world know that we serve a God that can make them more than who they are so sometimes they think oh if your God is truly a living God as you are telling me why is your life you are that I am the one who feeds you why should I follow you to church also for why should I follow you to church if what I'm doing I am comfortable with what I'm what other thing would your God add to my life that is why sometimes the church is as we are yes because we are not able to show and prove by our lives the testament that we serve a God who prospers how do I preach to the rich unless maybe one of their their children become so sick that they take them abroad and doctors are unable to heal them and I go and I lay my hands and the child just rises up and they know that ah if doctors were able to heal and this man has healed then his God who healed my daughter I'll go and follow that God evidence otherwise believe you me we will just be telling stories and unless we present to the God to the world that we serve a God who prospers hard work in your own hard hard work labor labor Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but meditate on it day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written in it for thou sh then thou shalt make thy way prosperous this, this verse, I did not want to, I don't want to read it because it's not one of the verses that will tickle, create a certain hunger to seek the God who prospers. But he says, if you meditate on my word, because the word of God is that which the Lord used to make the heavens and earth. If you meditate on my word, and be careful to obey everything that is in it. Then thou shalt make your way what? Prosperous and you shall have good success. The word of God. I said it here the last time. There is no prophetic direction. Church, hear me. There is no acquaintance that any man of God, even an angel will give you. That is as potent as the word of God. There is no acquaintance. Not even the one an angel will give you. That is more potent. Potent to say a year juma than the word of God. Look, for God to say he has exalted his word above his name. That is a very serious statement. Because his name makes him. He told uh, Moses. Moses said, Who, I, I, I am that I am. His name makes him. It is his name that makes him. So for God to say, I've exalted 
my word above my name. It means that the words that I've given you, I hold the word in high, the word in high significance than my very name, who I am called. Yeah. Meditating on the word. Obey what the word says. You shall have good success. My last one, Isaiah 54, verses 2. I want to show you the last one. Let me pray. Isaiah 54, verses 2. Isaiah 54, verses 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch. Enlarge. Enlarge is a verb. A verb means to do. Yeah, it's like walk. When somebody shout walk, I'll be walking. Sit, I'll sit. There is no word attached to it. To sit or whatever. Eh? Enlarge. It's a verb. A to do word. The place of thy tent. I'm going to explain to you. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Where you sit, where you are. Spare not. Lengthen the course and strengthen thy stakes. Verse 3. I will explain the verse 2. Verse 3. For thou shalt do what? Break forth on the right and on the left. And your seed will inherit the Gentiles. Come back to verse 2. Let me explain it. Enlarge the place of your tent. Last, I was telling Osafo, he was asking, after my master's degree, I'm preparing to do a PhD, a doctorate degree. And we were having a conversation, and I was telling him that, Osafo, do you know what? By the time Papa's generation will fade off, and our generation will come and take over the Universal Church for Christ, the people will be preaching to will be people whose least qualification is a master's degree. They are least, oh, least, least to cry. It means that one there, they don't even have. They, they don't have their least qualification. Yes. And imagine you are a, 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 have a JSS certificate. Look, there are things anointing can do. There are things knowledge can do. By the time they are, by the time I finish talking, naturally at the back of their minds, whilst I am preaching to them, they are calculating. Charlie, we are a JSS liver. Look, go to Pastor Bodinia Mitchell's church, Reverend Bodinia Maker's house. Look, see the category of people who are there. Yeah. He started, he started, uh, a lot of the churches started before his own. Home. But look at the category of what? People who are there. Category, I don't want to mention, profession, professionals. He prepared, he enlarged the place of his tent. So by the time a certain generation of men of God has passed, and we, the younger ones, take over, we'll be preaching to people whose least certificate will be master's degree. What will you have then? It is better I enlarge the place of my tent now and get the certificate. So when they get there and the time comes, they will be able to associate with me. That ah, I have a doctorate, I have a PhD. My pastor also has seen. When I preach to them that this is what God can do, they will understand it better because we are in the same boat. Enlarge the place of your tent. You want God to prosper you? And your only certificate you have will be a JSS certificate or an SS certificate. This is God talking. He said, enlarge the place because you are going to break forth. You are claiming to own multiple streams of businesses. Businesses. It doesn't happen by chance. You don't get up in the morning and somebody who owns businesses will come and say, oh, by, by my 40 days and 40 nights, eh, eh, I, I heard God talking to me that uh, you've been fasting for 40 days. And 40, th- these are all the documentation to my, to my companies and you go and sit there. Believe you me, within one week, we will be a good company, you know, because you don't have the experience to manage at that level. Yeah. And you know the reason why? 
Sometimes we pray certain prayers and God did not give us. Also, for, there are certain blessings saying, you made the money now, you are training a year. You have been money anymore. Because we don't have the capacity to do that. You think if, if, if David had not killed lions and bears in the bush, he could have even tried Goliath. Goliath would have made a simple meat of this boy. Simple meat of him. He would have made a simple meat of him. Believe you me, it was the preparation he did in the bush that made killed by and, and, and that is what he used. He, he told Goliath, I've killed lions and bears. So man, I may not have fought a war like this before, but the CV shows that I have fought dangerous animals. And I can face you. Had David not been that prepared, Goliath would have come this way. It would have been the other way around. Enlarge the place of your tent. Is it the schooling? It is not too late. You have to do it. Is this a course? Is this a certificate? You have to do it all. Because he says, why? Because verse 3, you will break forth to the left and you will break forth to the right. Build your capacity. Build your capacity. If it is it's, if it's a call God has placed on you, that's for you, you are going to be a man of God. You are going to be a prophet. Then whilst those of us are sleeping, you should be raising, rising up in the middle of the night, praying and building your capacity. Because you know what? Men are made in the secret place. Nobody is made in the open. No, 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 no. no. Because when you come out in the open, it will be a competition. If you don't take care, if you are not built up in the secret place, and somebody will flip the finger like this, and you'll be down. We've heard stories of some men of God who have laid their hands on some small girls, and the small girls will be laughing by the time they realize that the man of God couldn't work again, right in the presence of everybody. Yeah, when you come out in the open, the whole kingdom of darkness will challenge you to build your capacity in the secret place. When people are sleeping and snoring, that is when you wake up and you begin to cry to the God of heaven, the maker of men and the lifter of heads. Church, he says, enlarge the place of your tent. You want to be the world's best musician, gospel musician? It's not on... It's Hello? Yes. When people are sleeping and snoring, that is when you begin to pray. And the Spirit of the Lord will be downloading songs on you. Then you'll be writing them down. You'll be singing. You'll be singing and praying. You'll be singing and praying. One day when you release that song, people will think you are just a, a musician. People will think you are just a gospel musician. But when you are singing that song, cripples will be rising up. When you are singing that song, people with sicknesses and diseases will be disappearing. Demons that have attacked people by your songs, they will be disappearing. Building capacity. Not just to flashy dresses and just sing. No, you build capacity. You wouldn't know. No, somebody, they would not know whether you're a gospel musician. It's the same like David. People thought, oh, David was a shepherd boy. By the time they realized David was a king. They realized David was no longer, he, he was not only a king, he was a priest. He was not only a priest, he was a prophet of God. David, who made you like this? The abundance of graces. You don't know whether he's a gospel musician, whether he's a priest, whether he's a king, or whether he's a prophet. Because we serve a God who is the maker of men. A God who prospers. Enlarge the place of your tent because you are going to break forth. It is our month of prosperity. As Nehemiah said, the God of heaven will prosper us. Now say the prosperity is a day now. 
as I bring my sermon to an end. Sometimes we'll be here, sometimes we ask that question. If I ask, I can call somebody here and ask that, look, right now, if I give you 100,000 Ghana CD, I'm timing my clockwatch within the next two minutes. Tell me, tell me, believe you me, I might get people here who will say, Osma from Marinji and Oh, hallelujah. Yes, we need to be people who are prepared. That is what I'm talking about. We have to be prepared for opportunities. We have to be prepared for opportunities. There are people who have gone for, for interviews and the last, the last round of interview, they ask the person, do you have a driver's license? And the person will say, no, I don't have. I think I'm required a driver's license and they, they've not gotten the job. Driver's license, and they've not gotten the job. Meanwhile, this person has been prophesied on. He's been prayed for. His CV, he brought it with laid hands on. But a driving license. That one, God will not whisper into your ears that as you are going for this interview, they will ask you the last one will be your driving license. Hallelujah. You have to build capacity in the secret place. Church, we serve a God that prospers. We serve a God that prospers. And he has given us the mandates and the duty to testify and become testament of he, the God that prospers. Your prosperity is already enshrined in the redemptive work of Jesus. He has given it to you, but the onus lies on you to stretch forth your hand, to open the treasure box and tap into the prosperity that God has given you. You want to rise up on your feet very shortly and begin to pray? Can you give me the strength as you pray? You want to open your mouth? You want to open your mouth and begin to pray? You are only praying one prayer. I only pray one prayer that God prosper me. He says he will prosper the works of your hands. This month is our covenant month of prosperity. Believe you me, this month don't, don't, don't leave God if he doesn't prosper you. Jacob said, God or angel, whatever your name is, if you don't bless me, I will not let you go. This morning you are just praying to God very briefly that God in this month of prosperity you don't bless me, I will not let you go. God bless the works of my hands. Somebody open your mouth and pray. That in this month of prosperity, the maker of men will bless you. 